So here we are at the precipice, the doorstep of the grandest stage in professional wrestling, WrestleMania 39. We're about to have two nights of wrestling or sports entertainment or whatever the hell you call it. And while sure, as the event draws much closer, you, know, you can start to feel it a little bit. I get a little bit of a different vibe. I still feel a kind of eh about this year's card. The card still looks kind of it. There are matches on both nights that I am interested in. So it's not like I don't care at all. I'm just not as ramped up or pumped up as I would like to be. But let's talk about WrestleMania 39, starting with night one. And apparently the match that's going to kick off night one is the Breakfast Club special. As in, <laughs> if I'm not going over, I'm leaving as soon as I can. Austin Theory versus John Cena for the United States Championship. And here's what I'll say. You'll probably be stunned I'm going to say this, but hear me out. I really feel John Cena should win this match. Now, there, there could be a thing of... He's just doing this match first on night one because he can get the hell out of Dodge. That could be it. But at some point in time, if you continue to bring back John Cena only to have him lose, it leads to a diminishing return of value of when he does return. Because it becomes very predictable. You say, ah, oh, he's just coming back to do a job. And when you bring guys back like this, they shouldn't always lose. I maintain that. And to me, this is a perfect example of Austin Theory... You could have him lose, drop the strap to Cena, and if they got something maybe in the plans where they have Cena drop it to somebody like Lashley, Monday night on Raw even, like, at least you're creating an environment of some unpredictability around when John Cena comes. Could he win? Could he lose? You could go either way. Um, it's unlikely that that's where they're going, but it's possible. But it feels intentional for one reason or another that John Cena is being put in a spot to kick off WrestleMania this year. Uh, next up, I think, is going to be Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul. And this is a match I'm legitimately looking forward to. I think the dynamics and the chemistry of these two guys are really good in terms of as characters. And I expect that that's going to translate to the ring. To me, there's a piece of you'd like to see at some point in time Logan Paul go over in one of these matches at one of these big shows to which some of you are going to re be revolted by. But again... Talking about similar to Cena. If you always bring them in and they always lose, at some point in time it doesn't really matter. So if you could find a way to do it here, this would be a good chance to do it. But I do expect this match to deliver. I would be surprised if we look back at WrestleMania 39 and Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul wasn't one of the two or three best matches of the weekend. I'd be stunned, frankly. I'd be stunned. Of uh, the six-woman tag match... I don't care about much, even though you can say, well, you got Trish and Lita in there. That's fine and all. I just don't really care. Um, you know, are they going to have Bailey turn on damage control? Are they going to have damage control turn on Bailey? Are they going to have Trish or Lita turn on their team? I think I'm looking as much forward to, like, is this actually going to be a match or is somebody going to actually turn and set up something down the road than I'm in the actual match itself? The Fatal 4-Way Tag Match. You know, if you want to have Braun Strowman and Ricochet be this kind of odd couple tag team, which could work, then maybe you have them go over here. You know, if you want to give some respect to the Street Profits, you have them go over here. Maybe you split up totally Chad Gable and Otis. I don't know, but again, I really don't care about this match. It's just kind of filler to me. Um, Rey Mysterio versus Dominic Mysterio, I do care about. This is, when you think about the bloodline, obviously that's story number one and everything involving the bloodline when it comes to WWE over the past year. But number two, clearly entrenched in number two spot in terms of the most interesting and most compelling story is by far Rey Mysterio versus Eddie Guerrero's son. And you're going to say, what? You know what I'm fucking talking about. And Dominic, here's your chance to get revenge for your father, Eddie Guerrero, on Rey Mysterio's overbearing ass at WrestleMania. Now, whether or not Dominic really has big-time star potential, I don't know if I'm buying into all that shit. But, in terms of the storyline and the dynamics that lead up to this match and into this match, this one could be really, really good. I don't think, though, that Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship is going to be good. We saw them wrestle a couple years ago at WrestleMania, granted for the NXT Women's title. That match stunk, and of course, Charlotte Flair went over. Now, everything seems to point to Rhea Ripley's going to go over here, you would think, because if she's not, then what the fuck is the point of anything that you're doing? Um, but I will be very fascinated to see 
just how much the crowd hates Charlotte and how much they're behind Rhea. I'd be stunned if that LA crowd doesn't split or fully get behind Rhea here. This needs to be a fucking squash. You need a squash somewhere on WrestleMania. This needs to be it. Establish Rhea as the dominant mommy. Establish her as that bitch. You know what I mean? Having a long 15, 20 minute drawn out match filled with flare botches. You could certainly easily do that. And she's done that several times at WrestleMania. So what the fuck would be any different? But you want to get people's attention. You want them to get notice what's going on. You want them to take note of Rhea Ripley. You have her squash the shit out of Charlotte Flair on Saturday night, period. Now, there's been a lot of talk about what match is going to main event night one of WrestleMania. And thankfully, when Charlotte said her recent stupid thing about, well, the men's Rumble winner is guaranteed the main event spot. Why can't the women's be? I've, I've been impressed to see the number of fans taking to social media and calling out just how fucking stupid that statement is by her. Because it's not grounded in any type of recent reality. There are plenty of times the Rumble winner doesn't actually main event the show. They may be a headliner, they may get a title match, but that doesn't make mean they main event. But let's be real, unless they do something stupid, they've got to know in WWE that the Usos versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn has to main event 9-1. And frankly, if it wasn't that, then it needs to be Ray versus Dominic Mysterio in terms of the interest, in terms of the story. That's where it's at. Those are the two matches on night one. But it's ultimately the Usos versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And I wonder where they go with this. Now, we're assuming that Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are going to win here. And they could. I always wonder, like, what happens if you have Kevin Owens turn on Sami Zayn here? That'd be interesting. What happens if you have Jay turn on Jimmy? That's also interesting. You know, there, there's a lot of places you could go with this. Personally, I still look at this and I kind of wish they would have done Jimmy and Solo versus Jay and Sammy and figured out a way to make that work. But they didn't. You have to assume that they're sending the fans home happy here in night one and that Sami Zayn's going to get his big WrestleMania moment. And frankly, he freaking deserves it. I'm looking forward to this match. I'm assuming it's going to be fucking fire as hell and the crowd's going to end the night very, very happy. Switching over to night two, you know, you've got the triple threat for the IC title, Gunther versus Sheamus versus Drew McIntyre. So much for Gunther and Brock, huh? Oopsie daisies. Uh, but this match sh could be one of those, as much as I hate triple threats, could be really good in terms of it's more of a physical brawling type of wrestling match. And I do like that shit. That it does appeal to me more. Yeah, I can take that shit a lot more seriously. I've seen these guys have some really good brawling physical matches. So... And the question is, like, who do you have win here? Maybe you have Gunther retain, but maybe you give Sheamus a spotlight here at WrestleMania. Maybe with Drew McIntyre not being having a contract worked out, maybe he's the one that does the job here. I'll be interested to see what happens. Uh, and then you've got Edge versus Finn Balor in Hell in a Cell. I'm assuming it's going to be the Demon. Um, mm. Edge needs to win here. Edge needs to win. There's nothing more I can say about that. Now, this match does have a chance to be very good, and at least I can point to the fact that this is a match that deserves some type of big payoff, such as a Hell in a Cell gimmick, because there's a lot of story behind it. So, I'm hopeful that this match is really going to deliver. Um, then you've got the Fatal 4-Way Tag Women's Match. I don't fucking care. Like, think about how sad that is, is Ronda Rousey's in this match with Shayna in a tag team that's not even for a title and is a total freaking afterthought. Isn't that pathetic? That's absolutely pathetic. That's just amazing to me. Um, but we'll see what happens there, but I don't know that I'll care. Asuka versus Bianca Belair. The build-up to this match for the Raw Women's title has sucked really bad, but I'm hoping these two ladies will go down out and tear the house down and maybe Asuka will actually beat Bianca. That certainly could be possible. Brock Lesnar versus Amos. Omas. Excuse me. I always fuck that up. I'm so sorry. Versus Omas. Like, this could be surprising and that it's good and that it's short. It could also really stink. You're going to assume it's going less than 10 minutes, as it certainly should. The question is, will it go 5 or 6 or less? Probably on the left side here, and that might be okay. 
But a big spot for Omas, you know, and also kind of a big spot for Lesnar too in terms of, you know, can he help carry somebody like an Omas to a match that's going to matter? Uh, but on night two, the only thing I'm going to give a shit about, frankly, is that main event for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, Ro- Roman Reigns defending against Cody Rhodes. And you know my thoughts here about, I don't think this is when Cody should win. You're so close to a thousand days with Roman Reigns. You're talking about Cody and somebody's going to sit there and say, oh, you're going to sit there and say a lame shit about Cody's had no obstacles. But what about when he wrestled with the torn peck in his out for eight months? Did you ding dong dumb dicks forget that he was still booked to win that fucking match? So even with the injury, there was no obstacle. He became the fucking obstacle. If you want him to win here and then he becomes Cody Cena, well, the crowd's not turning on him now. Right now, no. But it's coming, I fucking promise you, because that's his history. It will happen. You'd be better off waiting for this shit, in my opinion, until SummerSlam. I don't care if you have Cody beat Roman at SummerSlam. Fine. But I don't think WrestleMania is the right spot, although it certainly seems like they're pointing that that's what they're going to do. I wonder where you go from there, right? Finish the story. Okay, you win the title and then what? That's the other problem here. What's the story? Can you really tell me? Can you? Eh. You know, the thought of a Roman might lose here and then he'll take a lot of time off. Well, that would kind of end the whole bloodline storyline with kind of a dud thud, wouldn't it? That's what I'm saying. Like, you have a little more mileage here to go and, like, you could fully break them apart come SummerSlam. Ah, uh, you know, maybe you have Paul Heyman turn and he aligns himself with Cody Rhodes. Like, do something. I don't know. Um, this match could be really good because Cody is a really solid in-ring performer. Roman Reigns is a really solid in-ring performer, and especially as a heel. This is when he does his best work as a storyteller. And Cody Rhodes can tell a story in the ring. So I'm hoping that that translates into an outstanding match. Obviously, personally, my bias is Roman retaining here. But right now, the way I'm looking at it, the way I'm feeling, I'd be really stunned if that happened. I think it should. But I just don't know. And I will have all type of mixed and conflicting feelings about Cody Rhodes being the new undisputed Universal Champion. But... I'm coming to grips with that potential inevitable reality. It would be cool if you could sit there and have Roman win and then The Rock comes out afterwards and, you know, you lay down the challenge for WrestleMania 40, but I digress. So you guys let me know what you think about WrestleMania 39. Are you excited? Are you kind of eh about it? Do you think it's going to suck? Do you think it's going to be great? Do you think it's going to surprise me? Who do you think's winning? Is it Cody or is it Roman? Tell me in the comments below. Can't wait to watch and review both nights of WrestleMania 39. Hell yeah.